السلام عليكم. This video will be about refuting violence claims made by Islamophobes all over the media. But instead of being all serious like every video, how about this time we play a nice game together. The game will be as follows. I will give you two statements and you guess which one of them is from Islam and which one is from Christianity. And let's see if your impression of the two religions is correct or not. We will use the honor system. Write down your answer in the comment below before I say it. And don't cheat and don't use Google. Write down the answer that you really believe in. Get ready, bring your coffee, and let's start. Question number one. I will read the two statements first without telling you which one is from Muslim scripture and which one is from Christian scripture. And you do the guessing. Statement A. When you are at war, do not kill a woman or an old man or a child or a baby or a sick person. Do not even cut a tree. Statement B. When you are in war, put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Even infants has to die. You have five seconds to guess which statement belongs to Islam and which belongs to Christianity. I hope you wrote the correct answer. Statement A, do not kill a woman or an old man or a child or a baby or a sick person, do not even cut a tree. This is a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. لا تقطعوا شجرة ولا تقتلوا امرأة ولا صبيا ولا وليدا ولا شيخا كبيرا ولا مريضا. But statement B, put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys, is from the Bible 1 Samuel 15:3. Did you guess correctly? Okay, question number two. Statement A. Cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. Statement B. Peace is one of the names of God. He put it on earth, so spread peace. I will give you five seconds. I hope you wrote the correct answer this time. So statement A, cursed is he who keeps back his sword from blood. This is from the Bible, Jeremiah 48.10. But statement B, peace is one of the names of Allah. He put it on earth, so spread peace. This is a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. إِنَّ السَّلَامَ إِسْمٌ مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَضَعَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَافْشُوا السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Question number three. Statement A, when you attack a city, offer them peace. If they accept peace, they all become your slaves. If they reject peace, kill all the men and take the women and livestock. Statement B, if your enemies offer peace, you have to accept it and offer them peace back. I hope you guessed the correct answer. Statement A, attack a city, either they become slaves or kill all the men and take their women and livestock. This is from the Bible Deuteronomy 20 verses from 10 to 14. Statement B, if the enemy inclined towards peace, make peace with them and put your trust in Allah. Indeed, he alone is all hearing and all knowing. This is from the Quran chapter 8 verse 61. وَإِنْ جَنَحُوا لِلسِّلْمِ فَاجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Question number four. Statement A. Anyone who kills a non-believer civilian will not go to heaven. Statement B. Have you allowed all the women to live? He asked. Now go kill all the boys. Kill every woman who has slept with a man. But save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. Five seconds. I hope you wrote the correct answer. Statement A, anyone who kills a non-believer civilian will not go to paradise. من قتل نفسا معاهدا لم يرح رائحة الجنة. This is from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him. Statement B, kill the boys and married women and keep for yourself the virgins. 
This is from the Bible, number 31, verses 14 to 18. Question number 5. Statement A. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on earth. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Statement B. I came to you to perfect good moral character. Guess. I think you wrote it correctly this time. Statement A, I didn't come to bring peace on earth, I came with a sword. This is Jesus talking in the Bible, Matthew 10.34. Statement B, I came to you to perfect good moral character. This is from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Question number 6. Statement A. Security to the non-believers. We give them security for themselves, their money, their worship places, and the rest of their faith. Statement B. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with the sword every living thing in it. Men, women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. I hope you write the correct answer this time. Statement A is from the letter of the Khalifat Umar ibn al-Khattab to the Christians in Palestine. Security to the people of Elia, their money, their churches, their crosses, and the rest of their faith. Their churches shall not be inhabited, destroyed, nor diminished, nor from their space, nor from their crosses, nor from their money, and they shall not be forced to change their religion, and none of them shall be harmed. Statement B destroyed with the sword every living thing in the city, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep and donkeys. This is from the Bible, Joshua 6.21. Question number 7. Statement A. People who are not from our race are dogs. Statement B. People from our race are equal to people from other races. You have 5 seconds. Okay, statement A, a woman who was not Jewish came to Jesus. She begged him to drive a demon out of her daughter. He said to her, first let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. This is from the Bible, Mark 7.27. Statement B, O people, your God is one. An Arab is not better than an un-Arab. An un-Arab is not better than an Arab. A white person is not better than a black person. A black person is not better than a white person. The one who is better in the eyes of God is the most decent and the most righteous. This is from the Hadith of Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessing be upon him. Question number 8. Statement A. He who sacrifices to any god except to the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Statement B. There shall be no compulsion in religion. Guess. I hope you wrote the correct answer. Statement A. Is from the Bible. Exodus 22:20. Statement B is from the Quran 2:256. لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرجل من الغي. Question number nine. Statement A. If you have a slave servant, you have to feed him as you feed yourself, dress him as you dress yourself, and don't give him hard work that he can't do. Plus, if you hit him one hit, just one hit. He is automatically free. Statement B. It is okay to hit your slaves with a rod, but make sure he doesn't die at the same day. If he dies a couple of days later, after torturing him, it's okay because he is your property. Guess.
Statement A is from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. But statement B, anyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result. But they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two, recovers from torture, since the slave is their property. This is from the Bible, Exodus 21, verses 20 and 21. Question number 10 and the final question for today. Statement A. The best good deed is to say the truth, especially if you are in front of an oppressive ruler. Who you fear, say the truth even if you will be killed for it. Statement B. It is okay to lie as long as it's for a good reason. Which one is the belief of the Muslims and which is from Christianity? Statement A, this is from a hadith from the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. أفضل الجهاد كلمة عدل عند سلطان جائر. Statement B is from Paul's teachings. If through my lie, God's truth was magnified, why am I judged as a sinner? This is from the Bible, Romans 3, 7. Enough playing for now. I want to say a message to everyone who had the opposite impression. To anyone who answered the 10 questions incorrectly. Do you know why you have this upside down impression of Islam and Christianity? Do you know why you think that Christianity is all about love and peace and Islam is all about violence and oppression while the holy scriptures are saying the exact opposite? Because hundreds and hundreds of media outlets, news channels, TV shows, movies, newspapers, and talk shows with hundreds of celebrities and public figures are saying the same lie every day. Even lately in video games, they are saying the same lie. As if they are all reading from the same script that was given to them, and this script is being repeated so much that it is starting to give impression to people, to normal people, that this is reality, everyone is saying the same thing. Do you know why all of them are saying the same thing? Do you know why all of them have the same script? Because all of these media outlets are owned by just six owners. Did you know that? Just six owners. Six owners have the power to shape the reality of billions of people around the world to put in their heads ideas and make them defend it as if it's their own. To make what's right wrong and what's wrong right. To define what facts should be. To manipulate history, present and future. These six owners control what you think the world is all your life. Only a few people have the patience to go through the original books, to fully read the Quran and the Bible and to see with their own eyes which book is the book of violence, racism, and oppression? And which book offers the solution to obtain peace on earth finally? I am sure there will be kids who will insult me in the comments below because they don't have the courage to challenge those six media owners who have been putting ideas in their heads all their lives. And they don't have the patience to actually grab a book and read it. They can only learn through entertainment. And this is all they know. And about the famous question, why are all Muslims terrorists or why are all terrorists Muslims? Same thing. I think you already know the answer, but I will say it again anyway. According to CNN, there are 600 to 700 mass shooting incidents in the United States every year. That is more than we can imagine in any normal community. But what media outlets are doing is as follows. First, they find out that there is a man who took a gun and opened fire at school kids for some reason. A criminal. They look at the man. If he is a white Christian man or an atheist, they call him a criminal and they don't talk much about the incident. They just, you know, let it slide. But if he is a brown man who has a beard, wow, suddenly all of these thousands of media outlets make a huge deal about how Muslims are terrorists and how bad those Muslims are and suddenly 2 billion innocent Muslims on earth 
have to defend themselves from something that they didn't do. The question is, what about the 99% of this mass shooting incidents that were made by Christians and atheists? Why isn't anyone saying they are terrorists? Why don't they have to defend themselves all over earth for something that they didn't do? Why aren't media outlets accusing them of being killers? Why aren't you accusing them of being killers? Listen to this. Because the media doesn't care and they let it slide, you also don't care and you let it slide. Imagine these six owners who own all media outlets in the world. They are dictating your thoughts, your beliefs, your own opinions that you defend all your life. It is exactly like hypnosis. You need to understand that there is no one claiming that Muslims are perfect. We have a lot of sinners in our community. In Muslim communities, there are people who drink. You can't point your finger towards them and say Islam teaches drinking. It is haram to drink. In Muslim communities, there are people who commit adultery and they have girlfriends and boyfriends. You can't point your finger at them and say this is what Islam teaches. Because adultery is haram. They are just sinners. The teachings of Islam are perfect, from God, preserved, but the people are not. There will always be sinners. If you look at statistics, you will find, surprise, surprise, criminals in Muslim societies. Although if you compare the crime rate in Muslim societies and in secular societies, the crime rate in Muslim societies is nothing to them. It's like 10%. But the media just focuses on those minority Muslims who commit sin and commit crimes and tell you, oh, this is Islam, while purposely ignoring the overwhelming majority of crime that is made by any other group of people. That is how they shape your reality, your beliefs, and your expectations. Let me tell you a story from history. Maybe you will see how history just repeats itself. Rwanda is an African country that was invaded by Germany in 1894, I think, then invaded again by Belgium in 1917. It had several ethnic groups inside of it, including one called Hutu and one called Tutsi. Both the Germans and the Belgians treated civilians in different ways based on their ethnic group. They even wrote everyone's ethnicity in the first line in his national ID, even before his name. Tell me your ethnicity first, then tell me your name. This is how they know if this person should be discriminated against or if this person should be treated nicely. That introduced racism and hatred between the civilians of Rwanda for the first time. Those people were living peacefully and happily together. But after the invasion, they caught the virus of racism from the Europeans, unfortunately. Long story short, I will skip forward to the important part. The beginning of the media hatred propaganda. The Hutu started a newsletter from the church called Kinmatica. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing it in a wrong way, it's in their language. This newsletter was spreading lies about the Tutsi, saying, Tutsi are bad people, Tutsi hate us, Tutsi are not even from Rwanda, Tutsi are savages, Tutsi are ruining our society, and so on. Sounds familiar? I think it does. I think Islam hates us. Then the media was upgraded to radio stations instead of newsletters, and the hate speech was upgraded from Tutsi are savages to Tutsi should not live, Tutsi are a cancer to this society and should be wiped out from the surface of the earth. Do you know what happened after that? Years of negative propaganda and hate speech resulted in half a million deaths. From other sources, it is 600 million deaths from the Tutsi. A simple hate speech in newsletters and radio stations resulted in the mass murder of a complete ethnic group. And the same story happened in the anti-Jewish propaganda in Europe just before the Holocaust. And the history just repeats itself again now with the Muslims. I will make a separate video about that later. But if you want to read more now, read about what is happening to the Muslims in India now. I mean, there's 200 million Muslims living in India. That's the yeah, second no largest Muslim them. population in the world. Uh, and yeah. you're saying that wherever Muslims live, that's If Muslims become more than 30%, that country is in danger. 
That sounds like hatred. That sounds no. like <laughs> language of hatred. It's towards... easy to say hatred. I'm being kind to them by not letting them come to India. Article 14 of the Indian Constitution guarantees the right to equality, as you know, yeah. for all persons living in India. I can tell you that's a misinterpretation of Article 14. Article 14 guarantees equality of equals. I'll give you an example. Are all people not equal? All people are not equal. Muslims do not deserve equal rights to apply for... There's no such thing as equal rights. They're not in an equal category. Or what is happening to the Muslims in China, in West China specifically. 24 of my family members are now put in concentration camps by Chinese government. My mother was taken to Chinese concentration camp in September 2018 and vanished since then. We were given two strict options, either become Chinese or die. If no immediate and effective action is taken against China, we may perish soon. And regarding the white men, let's wait and see what will happen. You were scared really? of the large what, what, crusaders, what, what, yeah? what large men from again? the north, who came and eat you and your children. Yeah. You are fucking dinner to us. You are only alive because we have permitted it. Do you understand? Like, you are living under our permission. You savages could be exterminated in a fucking second if you wanted to. And we will want to. When, you are bringing this on yourself because even though we are opening our doors and our hearts, we're welcoming you in. What do you monsters do? You spread shit. So this is just a Muslim way of life. We don't want that shit. So, what are you gonna so do? don't you worry. Don't you worry. We will fucking destroy you and we will eat you for dinner again. It means you are down in the food chain and we are up in the food chain. I want you to ask yourself a question. Let's take Al-Iraq, for example, or as you call it, Iraq. Al-Iraq, they didn't have any weapons of mass destruction. All of these claims from the US were just lies. We all know that, right? Why was it okay for 20% of the whole population of the country to be killed for no reason? And why are you okay with that? Ask yourself, why don't they see them as humans who deserve to live? 20% of the inhabitants of a country were killed for no reason. Think about that. This is a well-known technique called dehumanization, using negative propaganda and hate speech again and again and again until people don't really care if these millions of people get killed, starved to death, tortured, humiliated. They are not human like us. They don't deserve life. You don't want to wake up tomorrow to discover that you are on the wrong side of history. And more importantly, you don't want to meet your God in the hereafter as someone who doesn't care to check if he is in the correct path or not. My advice to each one of you is to get out of the bubble that media created around you. Read with your own eyes and see where the truth is before it's too late. I am sure you wasted a lot of your life literally doing nothing, sitting in front of screens, either watching useless shows or playing or scrolling social media. Do yourself a favor. Dedicate your spare time for just one month. One month of your life. To learn scripture and to find out the truth. I am sure you will not regret it. Maybe you will see with your eyes that I'm right. Maybe you will see that I'm wrong. In both situations, you will not regret it. You will just make sure that you are on the correct path. And if you want help translating the Quran, or if you have questions about Islam, my Discord link is in the description below under the video. Join us and either me or one of the Muslim volunteers will definitely answer all of your questions. This video is the beginning of a whole series dedicated to refuting the violence claims about Islam. I will be uploading regularly until I expose all the lies of the Islamophobes and the hypocrisy of their media. Link to the whole playlist will be also under the video. Remember that the Prophet said, deliver my message even if all you can deliver is one verse. Don't let this video stop with you. Share it with your friends. Also help it spread by engaging with likes and comments. And if you want to watch a complete breakdown on Sharia law to understand what Sharia law is, check out this playlist up there. And if you want to watch 
more refutations to Islamophobic claims, check out this playlist down there. Thanks and salam alaikum.